Welcome back everyone. Today is Sunday, August 17th, and this is the daily update on Hurricane Aaron. If you see behind me on the image, you can see the satellite imagery here, indicative of a powerful major hurricane. Aaron, uh, it, the, the wind speeds have come down a little bit since yesterday, uh, now at 125 miles per hour, making it a category three on the Saffir Simpson scale. Pressure is up a little bit, 946 millibars, and now moving west-northwest at 13 miles per hour. I should note that the fluctuation in intensity for these types of storms are very common, and in fact, it's forecast to uh, gain some strength over the next couple of days and return to Category 4 status. But the status, this is a great case of where the Saffir Simpson scale can be a little bit misleading because I want you to see this large area of heavy rain that is, is uh, sort of parked over uh, San Juan and the Virgin Islands or uh, Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. If we sort of zoom in a little bit here, you can see this sort of area of heavy rain uh, occurring over the same spots. These places have already received a significant rainfall over the last 24 hours, and it could get another two to four inches of rain uh, before the system air and finally pulls away, and a, a flood watch is in effect uh, through tomorrow, and there's already places with uh, flash flood warnings uh, in effect. So if you're watching us from down here, British Virgin Islands, U.S. Virgin Islands, uh, San Juan, uh, Puerto Rico, not a good day to be out, probably want to stay in. Now, what's going to happen as the storm starts to pull away? So let's sort of zoom out a little bit. You can see we now have tropical storm warnings in effect for the Turks and Caicos and tropical storm watch in effect for the uh, Southeast Bahamas. Another great example of why the cone doesn't tell you this. If you sort of look at this big satellite image and project it along, you can see where we're going to clip the areas of the Southeast Bahamas um, and uh, Turks and Caicos with these strong, gusty squalls, heavy rains, and winds. But many of you are probably uh, tuning in to see what's going to happen down the road. Still anticipating a turn to the north and ultimately northeast by middle and late week. Uh, staying offshore of the eastern United States, but getting perilously close to the outer banks of the Nor uh, North Carolina. So let's look at the forecast uh, wind field. This is the extent of tropical storm force winds. And you can see if the storm were to move just a little bit to the left or west of the forecast track, we could clip the outer banks with those tropical storm force winds and a tropical storm watch may be required for the Outer Banks uh, tomorrow, as early as tomorrow. But regardless of the track, regardless of whether it moves a little to the left or to the right, we still are seeing a major, major rip current risk unfolding. So I'm going to start with the rip current risk today, currently. You can see it's a little bit of a rip current risk starting to unfold but look what happens when I change it to tomorrow. You can really see the rip current reds here, rip current high risk starting to fill in along the coast, and that's only going to get worse as the week progresses. Why, you ask? Because this system is going to produce a massive wave, ocean wave field. The colors here show you the extent of the wave field. You can see it basically encompasses the entire western Atlantic and eastern seaboard. As these waves come and strike the coast, all that energy is going to break with these big breakers at the coastline, and that's going to increase the rip current risk significantly through the week. So things start to go downhill tomorrow and get progressively worse through the week. So if you're going to the beach this week, swim near a lifeguard, check local beach conditions, and just be mindful and safe if you're going to go to the beach. Now, we'll be back tomorrow at the same time with an update, but please remember, we uh, update our forecast every six hours or four times a day, and you can always get the latest information at hurricanes.gov.